Hello. So the last video that I posted on YouTube was about uh, drilling a high G tone hole into the wing joint on the bassoon. Uh, the result, long story short, it worked out actually better than I expected. Since then, I have been quite curious what would happen yeah, if you continue up. Um, this video is basically about that. Experimentation going on here now. I have no clue what will happen. So just enjoy the show. So here we are. And here is the G tone hole that I was drilling uh, in my last video that worked out pretty well. I have already marked here where I believe more or less the A flat could be. Um, so let's just go for it. Okay, now bigger drill. So yeah, the first drill was just to sort of create a hole and then I go gradually up and I'm expanding the tone hole by a certain amount of measurements for each time. Here is the second one. Through. Goodie. Next one. So number three, making it even bigger. Perfect. Easy PC. Okay, so now the tenor joint is on. <clears throat> I believe currently that this will not work because the diameter of the tone hole I just drilled, in my opinion, is too narrow, is much more narrow than the other ones. So this is just a test to see what happens. Personally, I think it will just be airy sounds and the note will not speak right now. That's what I think. But I'd rather drill too little, be surprised in comparison to drilling too much and fail. So I have done the same as always. I put in these rubber tubes into the tone holes here. I will start to play on a high E flat, more or less. Intonation will not be good in the start because I normally need my right hand on the boot joint to make these to uh, notes in tune. But let's see, uh, because then I don't think this will work, like I said, but if the G sharp slash A flat speaks, then the fingering for that would just be high D, whisper key, and the A flat key. But yeah, like I said, I don't think this will work, but let's see what happens. So when I let go from this finger, if it speaks, then that's the A-flat. If not, we will see. Okay, let's just go. Actually! <laughs> that actually worked. Okay, that's very interesting. I really did not expect that. Okay. Um, wow, that was really on the first try. Holy crap. Okay. Um, because I have a tuner just beside the camera uh, and I could see it's way too flat, but uh, this might actually work out. Wow, I, I really didn't expect that. Okay, but like I said, too flat, what I need to do, I need to make the tone hole much wider, then it can probably be sharper. So let's do that. Easy peasy. Okay, let's try it again now. Okay, so now we're back here, tenor joint back on. Right now, I don't think this will make too much of an impact because I expanded the tone hole with only half a millimeter, uh, which I think is too little to make it sharp enough. Um, but <clears throat> I always prefer to do too little and go step by step. So let's just see what happens now then. Is it more in tune? <clears throat> okay, same style as always. Of course, now, yeah, the green light shows, it's a bit shaky, but that's also because I'm moving around trying to show a tuner and stuff like that while doing this. So if I would just stand properly, everything would be fine and stable. I would move around. This is more or less in tune now, actually. So, wow, very exciting. So then actually the diameter of that tone hole is slightly smaller than the G. Interesting. Might also be because of exactly, exactly where I drilled or also because of the fact that the bore is conical and the higher up you go, maybe the more narrow the tone hole needs to be to have the same function. I'm not 100% sure why it is like this, um, but wow, very interesting. Okay, so now I've been uh, just having fun with this for a while and uh, yeah, I was very surprised. I didn't expect this to work out as easy as it did. I thought it would be much more work and much more complicated. Uh, I guess I was just lucky. Uh, but um, there is one idea that comes to mind 
And the reason why it comes to mind is because uh, my father, Robotanis, uh, one of the dreams that he had was to have a bassoon that goes from A to A. Of course, the low A we already have. Um, and theoretically also like in the expanded bassoon register, there are fingerings that goes much below A and much higher than the high A. But to actually have a key for everything that is required from A to A. Uh, therefore, since I still have this tenor joint, <clears throat> and since I've been lucky so far, I think I would be stupid not to try. So let's do that. Okay, so we're back here. Uh, there's a flat that I drilled just now. Uh, there are certain measurements that I have sort of calculated between the tone holes from the F sharp G and A flat. I'm trying to do it proportionally now, minus uh, half a millimeter more or less. <clears throat> and also I see now it's getting so high up that this will have to be a maximum. Uh, B flat doesn't work because if a B flat would be drilled, then I would start to drill, I guess, around here and then you hit the metal basically. So this is a test with the A. Does it make any sense at all? The answer is no, but does it work? <clears throat> Let's find out. We are through with the first one. Okay, we continue. Now with a little bit bigger drill, same procedure as every year. Done. Okay, so I will try this first. Okay, so now the wing joint is back on. Personally, I don't think this will work right now. According to my calculations, the tone hole is too narrow, but that also happened last time that when I thought that, then it actually worked out pretty okay. So I hope I'm wrong again, meaning that this works pretty okay. So this will then be chromatic from E flat up to hopefully an A. If this works, then the fingering for A will be high, disper high D whisper key and the A. <clears throat> Let's see. This is seriously the first time I'm trying. Real reactions on video right now. Uh, oh crap, how, how can this be done with one hand actually? Ah oh, crap, I didn't even think about that. Wait, like this then. <clears throat> ah, difficult. Okay, sorry. Here we go. Sort of. Right now, I have the tuner right here, and it says it's a really sharp G sharp. In other words, same problem as last time. It's way too flat. <laughs> so I think I will just do what I did last time. Expanding the tone hole until it's in tune. So let's do that. Perfect. Very good. Then we try that. Okay, then we're back here. <clears throat> the tenor joint is on. And I will now try to play chromatically from E flat more or less, first notes out of tune, because I will need the right hand normally down on the boot joint to make this in tune. Hopefully all the way up to an A that is in tune. <clears throat> Let's see. see the tuner while I was showing it to you but I, as, as far as I could see it was green maybe slightly even on the sharper side which is amazing because uh, normally they are normally flat so very happy about how that worked out wow that's the first time I saw it also myself so yeah I'm very very enthusiastic about that <clears throat> in other words yeah I think we can say mission accomplished tenor joint with tone holes all the way chromatically up to a high A and uh, needless to say, uh, the high A is without doubt uh, the top that you can go with this kind of vents, as uh, we call it, all the way up to high notes. Because if I would try to continue to drill a high B flat, for example, just for the fun of it, then the B flat would be, you know, around here. <clears throat> so basically where uh, the metal is, which makes no sense. Uh, I'm not going to drill there. <clears throat> so high A is for sure the top. Very interesting. Okay, so now let's try to play something in the normal range. Has something changed? Actually, just before I turned on the camera, I played a few notes, and in my opinion, something has changed in a negative way. So let's play a little bit more, let's see. <clears throat> so uh, I don't know if you can hear, but the instrument
instrument now is much flatter than what it normally would be, uh, which is something I don't like at all. Um, and I believe that is when you drill more holes, especially into, for example, the tenor joint, you of course do also expand the volume of the bore, uh, which means the rest of the instrument is also affected by that. Uh, therefore, I think maybe it's not actually a good idea to go all the way up to A. And that is why it's so ex important to experiment with those kind of things on a wing joint like this, that you don't sacrifice uh, a good wing joint on something like this. Um, in my opinion, <clears throat> the A, nope. G sharp, questionable. Uh, considering also that this wing joint doesn't actually have uh, for example, C sharp and A whisper key that is not drilled in. Then you need to keep in mind that if you would add this on a normal bassoon's tenor joint, that means, you know, volume wise of the bore would also be slightly different than on this, which is why I would then say also that G sharp, no, not a good idea either. Uh, the G is in my opinion now the limit uh, where this makes sense. Because if you would like to go higher, if you want the high A flat and the A to be drilled in, then yeah, you can do that and the, they will be in tune eventually, but you will then need to actually, you know, move maybe every tone hole accordingly uh, on the rest of the instrument to make it what it was, uh, which is such a big amount of work that that is not something I'm going to do here right now for sure. And I don't think there is very many other people who's interested in doing that either. Um, so again, having an instrument from A to A, I think is problematic. Uh, even with the low A, you know, I have made a video on that as well, pros and cons. Um, I have the feeling now when you drill a high A, a similar situation occurs. So the bassoon is probably not meant for that. Of course, you can, like I said, make a bassoon for this purpose only. But uh, yeah, then you will need to do that. And that's certainly a completely different instrument. So conclude, yes, I will have the high G drilled in, but I will stop there. So in the end, I would just like to, again, thank Bernd Mussmann for letting me borrow this uh, wing joint that he wasn't going to sell anyways, uh, that I could be crazy with and experiment on. Uh, this would not be possible without you. This is all yeah, new information, I think, for the most of us. And uh, it's interesting to see and to hear what happens uh, when you push limits like this? Something works, something doesn't. And eventually, yeah, you just need to know where the limit is sometimes. At least I am very curious about those things. So now we know. Thank you so much, Musman, for uh, letting us do this craziness together here. And uh, yeah, see you very soon, I hope.